AEAC is made possible by Air Venturi, Hawksport Optics, Diana Air Guns, FX Air Guns, Pro Air Federation, Air Arms, Sports Match Rings UK, H&N Sport Pellets, Air Marksman Air Gun Accessories, and JSB Predator Pellets. And you guys know the best way to thank them. Okay, folks, we are here with Optison Sport Optics, and the reason why I wanted to get Lily and Philip in front of you guys today, not only because Lily is an air gunner and a lot of air gunners like to run Optison on their guns, but because you guys have revamped your entire lineup for 2023, and some big news is every single scope in the lineup is Springer rated for exactly. reverse recoil. Yes. Thanks to Philip over here. Just brief introductions, Lily is over, you're, basically the director of operations yes, for correct. Optison, and Philip is over manufacturing and engineering. So today we're gonna get you through all three of your lineups of scope, right? And then I think Philip's gonna take over and he's gonna get us through some binoculars. Yes. Something Optison is also very passionate about. Does that sound exactly. good? Sounds yeah. good. Sounds good. So Lily, could we start with the uh, my favorite, the CP? Yes, yes, let's do so. Uh, yeah, let's get them all up here. Okay, so this is the CP line. What price point are we in for this compact? We are from uh, three ninety nine all the way up to for the uh, between second focal plan and first focal plan. Okay, we're from uh, three ninety nine all the way to five 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 fifty five. 550? 550. Yeah, 559. <laughs> okay, so okay, so four to five four to five fifty ish basically. Yes, yes. Okay, so you've revamped the CP for 2023. Yes. What's going on here? The CP is an answer to our uh, UK champion team uh, in England. HFT. HFT team. Which, which do you shoot HFT? Y yes, I shoot badly. <laughs> okay, but you get an A for effort. Yes, so this is my, based on my experience uh, when I was taking the HFT 101 with the champion shooter. So you went to school? Yeah, I did. Okay. And what I realized was the, the pain point when I did my first shoot was the difficulty in managing parallax error. Uh -huh. At that time, I was shooting the member light 3 to 12 by 44. Okay. And with that skull, um, with uh, like an um, uh, ent uh, entry level shooter, mm -hmm. uh, what I experienced was that I often miss just by a parallel with the uh, aiming position. Yeah, because that parallax is reticles moving around on yes, you. Yes, yeah. yes. So, unlike a lot of experienced shooter where they are more trained and in, with more control mm -hmm. they are able to actually use the up more objective mm -hmm. to range fire. So from reading what you're saying mm -hmm. is you wanted to bring a scope to market that, that was a compact yes. but was also more forgiving yes. in parallax air yes. and that's kind of what's at the heart of the CP line? Yes. That's 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 it. Okay. Uh, so I nailed it. We, yes, exactly. Thank you. <laughs> no problem. So uh, what we do with the uh, we begin with the 32 millimeter lens. Okay. And this uh, allows us for targets from uh, one, 10 yard 10 yards to 100 yards. Okay. Anywhere in between, you are um, you're experiencing only less than half a MOA. Uh, parallax error. error. Up to 100. Yeah, all just way regardless. In yeah. Nice. Regardless of your where your eye is set. Okay. Um, uh, so uh, going up to 40, this still still holds. Mm -hmm. More than that, it um, we, we will start experiencing parallax error. So we what we did with the scope was. Um, Number one to solve this pain point mm -hmm. with uh, of this parallax error. Mm -hmm. You that, fixed what was pissing you off. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then um, the second one would be constantly. Um, I was requested by a Springer Springer shooter. 
uh, Springer shooters and yeah. Springer champions, especially. In HFT? Yeah, that okay. they were constantly looking for a scope that is, that, like, set their mind free, mm. that are, like, guaranteed, uh, uh, reverse recoil guaranteed. Uh -huh. So, uh, listening to this and gathering this, and this all came from uh, special thanks to our world champion, uh, Simon Bond. Okay. Yeah. Uh, together, he helped me and give us input in uh, making this possible. So it's, okay, so it sounds like the, the, the CP came of your HFT school, yeah. your HFT air gun shooters, yes. and and things that just pissed you off in general that you wanted to fix. And yes, you yes, wanted and you yes. wanted in your scope. I thought if if it's difficult for me, then it could be difficult for some of totally. the entry level. Totally. Okay, so there's three CPs here. Yep. Um, I noticed one was a fixed magnification, yes. and it looks like uh, the others are variable. Do you want to speak to that a little right. bit? Right. So the whole CP line uh, starts from 10 by 32, 3 to 12 by 32, uh, 4 to 16 by 40. Okay. In 4 to 16 by 40, we we have available in both second focal plane and first focal plane for you uh, because we think 4 to 16 is more of a multi-purpose. Sure. Um, That's amazing in a compact. Yeah. And I love that you have the Hunter's turrets yeah. on here too. This totally just makes, this speaking to me for a like a high-end spring gun mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. HFT. Yes. Or, yeah. you know, more so a high-end Hunter, but. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and cool. also we are experiencing a lot of the rifle are going very compact. Mm -hmm. So yeah. they are. I have this nicely. on my. I have this on my Impact M3. I'm running it right now mm -hmm. on a review video and tuning guide that I'm working on. So, and I'm loving it. Stay tuned. Did you, do you want to add anything about reticles before we bounce to the next lineup? Mm -hmm. I think the reticle is pretty much our signature MH10 reticle. MH10. So it's just um, the reticle that is correct at 10. Uh, has the intuitive mill hash marks mm -hmm. that we all familiar with, okay. with uh, windage dots for holdover. That would be all. Uh, we didn't do much uh, okay. enhancement in and, that area. And so if they want to view this radical, they could go to www.optisonsports, with an S, optics.com. Correct. To correct. view your radicals blown up. Yes. Cool. Correct. All right, you ready to hit the next one? Yes, all right, let's cool. go. Okay, so this is the EVX lineup. Yes. But I noticed there's something different on here since I've seen it last. Yes. G2. Uh, yes. What's that all about? G2 uh, is the second generation of EVX. Okay. Um, in the first, uh, our EVX has run for over six, seven years. And I think it's time that we do some improvement on top of it. Uh, okay, what'd you change? <laughs> The, the main change goes on to the turret. Oh. So the turret is uh, fully stainless steel, and um, this time we make it 10 mil per turret. Also- It's huge, uh, we, both of those. Yes, and for our American shooter, we also bring an option of MOA turret. For the MOA turret, is 20, mil, 20 MOA per turret. So you're offering two different turrets- Correct. On the EVX lineup. Yes. Huh, what, what, kind, what money are we in here, just generally? Um, we are at um, 449 to 599. So five across, to five? Across second focal plan to first focal plan. So plane. five to 600 bucks across the two focal planes. Did I hear that right? I got distracted by someone that walked by and waved to me. Sorry, guys. Ru ru uh, roughly, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> okay, mm -hmm. okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, what makes this scope coat, or what makes this coat scope? Can you talk? Special. Like, okay. Um, who is this for? This is in general for you. Hmm. Now this is so versatile. Okay. Hmm. You you your your um, center fire. Yeah. Uh, center fire hunter. You you're looking for a precision like PRS. Yeah. PRS in the NRL. Yeah, the, we have the 6 to 24 by 50 F1 that you, you could apply. Okay. Mm. Would you recommend this on a Springer? Yes. This yeah. also goes on Springer. Okay, so they the mechanism the, Springer rated? Yes, the, they share the same mechanism as the CP. Okay, how about HFT, shooting air guns? 
Yes, but I would think that it's too heavy for the okay. HFT shooters. Okay. Yeah, yeah. If yeah. you're walking Love in your the honesty. field, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's for my uh, that's my opinion. Yeah. Well, you're I, speaking I from experience. That's what's so cool about it, this. Yeah. You I, got a shooter that's developing scopes. I love it. Mm, I, I I've witnessed some of the um, fellow shooters in the field, and some of them still like the EVX. They still like um, they they still like. Uh, a target style turret. Okay. Um, most likely because they combine the HFT shooting mm -hmm. with other discipline. So it's a more of an indi individual decision. Uh -huh. But what I see more popular is to reduce the wave more and more. Okay. Yes. Do you offer more or different radical styles in this than you do the CP? Yeah. Um, yes. In the second focal plan, EVX Gen 2, we offer the new MHP-10. That means a mill hash, but in a, with a precision windage dots. Okay, so it gives you, yeah, it gives you a little bit more finesse. Yes. The shooter more finesse out there in the field. Yes. More bandwidth, if yes. you will. Yes. Awesome. Uh, did I forget to ask anything that you wanted to share with these guys? Oh, or, I want, yeah. I want to just some small, small features. Yeah, yeah. We add an optional throw lever in the box. Oh, there it is. Mm. Yeah. So in each uh, box, in, in in each package, we include one extra throw lever. Nice. Also, uh, this idea also is contributed by Paul Clark. Paul Clark, okay. The Wisconsin Air Gunner. Oh, so, yeah. Uh, he, he, sometimes when shooters wants to swap uh, scopes between guns, you're, you're, you, you could. Oh, uh, we included one spare uh, blank dial for the turret. For the turret. Yeah. Oh. So this is PJ Clark. PJ Clark, yes. She's yes. referencing PJ of Wisconsin. He has a YouTube channel, Wisconsin Air Gunners. Yes. PJ. Yes. All right, I'm with you. So, with um, spare, uh, with a blank turret, you could in, you can put your own ballistic drops on. Very cool. So, yeah, spare so turret, stainless steel, 20 clicks. Yeah. And lockable. And lockable. Yeah. Good stuff. Awesome. Yeah. Is that it? You ready to bounce to the next one? Yeah. Okay. Okay, so... The ES line is a little bit dialing back in the money. Yes. Okay. Yes. Why? Um, first of all, uh, it's a low low profile turret. Yeah, they got the hunters hunters yes. turrets. Yeah. Yes. And this is uh, this is an upgrade from the previous EVE line. Okay. But we fix all the weak weeks weaknesses weaknesses. Okay. <laughs> in a in the illumination control. Uh huh. Uh, and the and and the the same uh, reverse uh, Springer rated mm -hmm. re reverse recoil system. Okay, so this was the HX. Did I have, do I have that right? EVE. The EVE, excuse me. Yes, it's um, it's the. So the EVE is turned into the ES. Yes. Okay. The Got EVE it. Sorry. was the everybody loves the clarity and the optical system. Yeah, and the money. So, the money is good too. Yeah, and yeah. it stays. Mm -hmm. What we upgrade is mechanical internal. Okay, so you made the guts better. Yes. Basically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was with the revamp of the lineup for the spring rating. Yes. Got it, got it. The ES share the same turret like the low profile CP turret. Yeah, it's just like the CP back yeah. here. Yeah. So this is aimed for uh, hunters and sports shooters. And the shooters that wants then hybrid scope. So what do you mean by hybrid? Hybrid is uh, you want one scope for hunting, but you also want to do precision shooting for it. Oh, with it. okay. Yeah. You can do both. Yes. So this is fine on center fires, fine on Absolutely. springers, fine on PCPs. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. What um, are you doing? Anything special here when it comes to reticles oh. or magnification? Uh, this also share the same new MHP-10 reticle we spoke about for the EVS Gen okay. 2. At 10, and Magnification, magnification yeah. um, it's mill hash based mm -hmm. and intuitive, or like our signature MH-10 reticle, mm -hmm. plus that uh, windage precision dots. Okay, and then what magnifications is the ES available in? At the moment, uh, for for the first 
half of 2023, we have 10 by 44, 3 to 12 by 44, and 4 to 6. So fixed and variable again. Yes. And that everything we've seen so far looks like a 30 mil tube. Do I have yes. that right? Yes, you're correct. Anything in your lineup to stray from that? Stray from that? Uh, is, there, is there anything in your lineup that is outside of a 30 millimeter tube? Uh, not yet. Not yet? Yeah. Not, not yet? yet. Um, that sounded promising. In, uh, under, under development. Okay, got it. Top secret. Classified. <laughs> Classified. <laughs> okay. Do you want to talk about any more scopes before we bounce on to binoculars? Because I see an oldie but goodie down there on the end. And maybe we have somebody new? The value priced guy down at the end? Oh, okay. Can I grab yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, let's do so. So this one I just know has been around for a while. It's not new. No, it's not new. But it's been there for since 2013, 14. But the money might get somebody really excited. Okay. And it's a one inch tube. Yes. And there's a lot of applications for that. So I thought, hey, let's take them through it. Okay. So this HX is the very basic scope. Okay. Uh, what, what kind of dollars are we talking? 180 bucks for a three to 12. Okay. And 190 bucks for four to 12. So sub two hondo. Mm. All right. Mm -hmm. um, these are, these are, I think basically, yeah, like, if, 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 like for basic firearms. Yeah, if I remember, if I remember, yeah, yeah. this is for like a rim fire. This is for a precharged pneumatic. This is not for a Springer. No, 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 no. It's not for a Springer. Yeah, so it's great rim fire scope. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Yeah, great entry level scope to. Can you put it on like a two two three or? A oh, for sure. For okay. Sure. So it these can, are rated for center fire. These are already rated up to three oh eight. Okay, so there you go for sub two hundred bucks. Radicals, I imagine something simpler. <laughs> the ancient duplex. Oh, we're going way back. And also the BCR, ballistic compensated radical. Okay, what's that? That's uh, also ancient <laughs> BCR. Okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Okay, great. So, um, Philip, is it a good time for us to bounce into some binoculars here? Sure. Great. I'm gonna, guys. We're gonna, we're gonna reposition the camera over here, and we'll be back in a second. Take you through some cool binocs. All right, Philip, uh, binoculars. Yes. You are a passionate bird watcher. Yes, I'm very much into bird watching. <laughs> and I, I do a lot of conservation work also in the Asia area. Oh, very cool. Yeah, and I also am, am, am part uh, and doing guide for Raptor Research Group of Taiwan now. Very cool. Yeah. So, so you've applied all that passion into Yes. Binoculars. Yes. You, funnel, I, you funneled that, channeled that energy. Yes. I need to feel a uh, better product because I can't use other products. That's so cool. <laughs> Same, that's a story your sister had. Yeah. She didn't like what was out there, so she built one that worked for her. Yeah. Cool. Man, let's go through it. Okay, so uh, our natural observation line, usually we have two philosophy. One is uh, lighter in weight. So that, because usually we carry binoculars, that is only one of the equipment we need. You usually also need like cameras or spotting scope. So I, I, we prefer lighter uh, equipment. Because you're you're just loaded up with all yeah, this gear. Yeah. Okay. We also I can like visualize that. Bird guide and everything. Yeah. yeah. So we need light and compact, mm -hmm. and also they also need to perform very well optically so that you can see all the details you want. So you have a heavy duty line as well. Yeah. yeah. Does it do both? Do you, can you have the light as well as all of the details? Yes, I believe our new line, okay. the LR series, will give you that. Yeah, and so the new LR line. And LR. Open, yeah, LR. LR line. Yes, yep. they come into two optical systems. The uh, HD one is in brown and the ED one is in olive green. HD1 and ED1. Yeah. Okay. And the olive green uh, version is already the, t the light trans total light transmission is about 86 percent already. Okay. So it's very very bright in in this uh, price range. Okay. And you will have what price point are we in here? The the 8 by 34 would be uh, about uh, 389 MSRP. Okay. So 400 ish. Yeah. Yeah. Less than 400. Less than <laughs> yeah. sorry. Less than 400. Okay, and uh, you, uh, we utilize uh, the Japanese optical design. So from center to edge, you will have very less distortion and dispersion. Okay. And yeah, that's so, important. Yeah, yeah. 
We don't want any feathers bending in the end of our in the end of our frame. Yes, you're totally. Right. Or beaks. We don't want any curved beaks. Yeah. And um, I think another very important thing what I've been working on is that. The, the, I, we, I have put a lot of uh, thoughtful uh, uh, thoughts in the development. Mm -hmm. uh, let me start yeah. from top to end. Yeah, let's do so it. First Run. of all, the neoprene stress uh, is very thick, so it, it will loosen the, the stress from your mm -hmm. uh, back. And we have a uh, like free device here. A swivel. Yeah. So yeah. you won't be you won't be. Uh, twirling up the strap uh -huh. when you put it in your bag and you take it out. Uh -huh, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. And we pre-install these the ears, the ear strap. So when you take it off on the box, you have these two pre-installed. Mm -hmm. So if you wanted to change it to the X-shaped harness thing. Mm -hmm. You will need to like oh, so you have flip it on. You have an X and this? Uh, no, no, no. We, we, we. This is standard. And the X is yeah, aftermarket. X is, yeah, optional. Got it. So, but do you make the X or does someone else make it? Uh, we're gonna get a good X. Oh, they're uh, gonna make an X. Okay. Yeah, later. I'm with you. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So if you want to change it to an X, you don't need to remove anything, save you all the hassle. You just need to click it on. Nice. Usually, other X-shaped harness will yeah. have the buckle thing. This could go right yeah. in my pocket or my backpack or whatever. Yeah. Mm. And. And the second thing is that we have the ocular and the objective cap both removable. So and they both, but they yeah, both stay as yeah. well. Okay, so yes, they. Uh huh. Uh huh. So that when you are doing the observation in a windy area, it won't like flapping around and oh. mess up your view. But you've also got protection from the rain if you need it. Yes. Cool. How many? So, uh, what's the main difference between all of these different? Um, binoculars. binoculars, yeah. Oh, so uh, they are uh, for a guy like I don't know binoculars. So you have that ultralight one. Mm -hmm. and, go ahead. Yes. The 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 main difference, uh, the, the, uh, the price difference between binoculars yeah. is usually uh, coming from uh, like optics performance. That will be one. Mm -hmm. and other thing will be the structural reliability. Yeah. So, okay. is it, are these all the same, or is this the ultralight and then more like the heavy duty? Uh, uh, we, all of our optical binoculars are waterproof, so structural wise, it's pretty much very close. Okay. Yeah. But the optical performance, they they vary. Like, take the entry level brown one LR, for example. This is the less than 400 one. Yeah. Th this is even cheaper. Oh, okay. Yeah. This one is. Uh, 229 oh. for the 8 by 34 okay. I usually recommend these for like uh, girls or kids that is uh, getting just beginning beginning birders oh. I usually recommend these because okay. they are very light so that it won't, they, they can carry this a uh, whole morning do bird watching without you know a sore back and if they drop them in a puddle it's not the end of the world because yeah. it's only 229 bucks yeah. okay so, you will feel much more lighter uh, for the, the more uh, uh, the expensive one, mm -hmm. and you will see more detail. The resolution. So it's better more, glass. Yeah, there's the same thing in uh, like in the rifle scope. Okay. Usually, if you pay more in the optical system and the lens coating, you will get more light, and the resolution is uh, can be better. So brighter and sharper. Yeah. So 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 I've heard 229. I've heard. 389. Yes. Do you offer anything more expensive? Yes, that would be this one. Aha. Yeah. These, we have them made in Japan. What, what kind of money is that? Yeah, so it's only uh, 500 ish. Oh, that's not bad. Mm. And the great thing about this is so bright that the total light transmission is 93%. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So Japan makes your lenses or the whole thing? Yeah, we, we make our parts and then we have the, the quality control them, but we have a, uh, a friend in Japan who assembled them and have them made in Japan. Wow, yeah. super and cool. Shipping. What's this one called? EVR, the EVR line. So the EVR, the LR, and the CR. What's the yes. CR? We have a bright pack CR. Little guy. Is, yes, the compact version. Usually the travelers will pick this side, the uh, compact pocket size. Uh, when you travel, so mm. you can have them. And we have a patented design that is, you can change the diopter adjustment mm -hmm. without moving your, your your right hand. Usually, it's the right diopter you need to like take your hand off. Yeah. So you lose the steadiness, mm -hmm. and you turn here, 
But with this, you have both your hands on during the whole diopter oh. change compensation it, process. Is that on all of them or just this, the little mini here, the little oh, CR? Just this one. Just, just that the one. CR. Yes. Okay. Is that, well, teach me about magnification with yes. binoculars. Mm -hmm. So I see a 10 by 34. Is that kind of the standard, 10 by 42? Yes. What's, the, what's the range? So usually, when you hand carry a binocular, yeah. you can't because your hand is not 100% steady. Like the, the same reason why we use tripod with uh, like a higher magnification mm -hmm. optical devices or cameras. So we usually we only do like eight power or 10 power because that's the power that like average human oh, can hold steady. Yes, and it moves observe. around too much. Ah, that yeah. makes great, perfect sense. Yeah. That's very nice, nicely explained. So this guy over here, that's not a spotting scope. Yeah. That's for watching birds from like way far away. Yeah. So um, our collection spotting scope PL, this is our new product also this year. And you can see that it has 80 millimeter diameter objective, but very compact. What did you say it was called? Uh, PL. The PL. Yes. Okay. And it's uh, another species we have been protecting in Taiwan. The, I, we, we use the uh, 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 short in their Latin name. Okay. <laughs> PL. Yeah, it's a, uh, it's a it's a spoon shaped, very important species that we because they travel on our coastal line. Uh, and, and this is for watching them. Yeah. So what kind of money is that? Uh, One thousand six hundred and ninety nine. So seventeen hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. And what's the magnification on that? Uh, we have from. 15 to 60 many, uh, power. 15 to? 15 to 60. To 60? Yes. 60. Yeah. Wow. So how it, far away are you watching birds with that? Uh, usually, uh, it depends. When I do like uh, research work and, and sensor work, it's uh, usually the birds is very far. Sometimes, how far? How many meters? Sometimes like um, uh, over 500 meters. Wow. Yeah. So we need to count them. They usually like, we will, will, uh, sleep in a group, so we're trying to count them using uh, the spotting scope. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, and it's it's very very light, and it's uh, it's about like oh, oh it's the total weight of the spotting coat is less than four uh, pound, uh -huh. about four pound, and it's about like two hundred gram less than the same weight of the optical other wow. other line of optical. So let's say I'm not into birds. What if I'm into planets? Can I can I use that to look at the moon and stuff? I think the, the magnification for the moon is okay, but for like the Jupiter, um, Jupiter, and the moons around the, Jupiter. Jupiter in the 60 power, you can see about this in your in your tiny yeah in your view. Can you see the moons around Jupiter at 60 power? Moon around Jupiter? Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Did, did that? A moon of the Jupiter. Moon or the moons that are around Jupiter. Oh yes. I'm asking. I'm setting you yes, up. Yes. So my wife and I were playing with a spotting oh. scope a couple. It was about a month ago, and in, in in Florida, we could you could actually see all the moons around around Jupiter. It's really cool. Oh. Really? And I think it was 60 power. So, mm. and this is way nicer than what we had. So oh. I'm thinking you could probably do that with that. Oh. Then yeah. I thought you were seeing the the, the, the cloudy thing there. Oh, the rings. Yeah, yeah, oh, sorry, yeah, the rings. The rings. You yeah. can kind of see that, but not really. More, more the moons around. Yeah. So with the ED lens, I believe what, what you have in hand, you will have a, a more like um, purple and blue edges when you are using high power. So with the proper optical design and the help of the ED lens, we are eliminating the dispersion of that. Okay. And when you do that, you will have more resolution. I see. So it helps us to, you know, identify uh, birds and target and whatever you're watching. Yeah, you can see their colors and their patterns and really understand yeah. what you're looking at. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And so, uh, does that for, to take pictures with a cell phone? Yes. That thing I see hanging down there? Oh, okay, yeah. We have uh, phone cases built in. I don't, we're going to have to talk into the mic or they won't hear what we're oh, saying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there we go. So, I have a adapter that, uh, uh, integrates the uh, this thing that clips on the ocular and then also a, a phone case for oh. the iPhones. So this is an accessory. Yes. To that. Yes. What does this cost? Uh, about like eighty bucks. Okay. Yeah. And let me show you guys what I have been recording. Oh, this is the one. Oh yeah. Show them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
Cool. So, so he's how eating, far away was that? Eating stuff. Oh, this this one is close. Okay. I think this one got oh, only a uh, hundred meters. Okay. Yeah. Super cool, though. Mm -hmm. So, what are we missing in your binocular lineup that we should share with these guys before we we sign off and say goodbye? Um, Did we cover all of them? Yeah, I think we're good. Mm -hmm. Great. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Lily's busy. Busy. I was gonna yeah. get her back here to say goodbye, but uh, thank you guys. I, I will grab it. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Real quick. Yes. Yeah. Get in here for a quick set. Just wanted to get you back to thank you both for again, yeah. spending your time with these guys and teaching them all about Optisan. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for watching <laughs> until now. <laughs> and now, where, where, if they're watching from the United States, yeah. where can they go to find your product? We're on Utah Airgun, Trenier Outdoor, Ken. Southern Precision Air Weapons? S Southern, okay. Southern Precision Air Weapons. Yeah. Optics Planet. Optics Planet, okay. And soon more. <laughs> this is great. Yeah. Great. Anything you want to say in closing? Thank you for watching. <laughs> <laughs> Real original, guys. Great job. <laughs> no, really appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank you so and, much. Um, Thank have you a great rest you. of your show. Thank you. It's always fun. <laughs>